Today we're ranking every brawler from the easiest to master to the hardest. We're strictly talking about how much effort and how much time it's going to have to take in order for you to master each brawler. Starting off at the very bottom of the F tier, mostly auto aim brawlers is Jackie. Jackie is without a doubt the easiest brawler in the game to play. You don't have to aim her attack or her super and her attack deals all of its damage at once. So it's just hit or miss. Pretty much the only thing you have to do is just like make sure you're in the right spot. After Jackie is Rosa. Her attacks aren't a full circle like Jackie's are, but it's wide enough that you can still get away with mostly auto aiming most of the time. There's a little bit of strategy to when to, when to activate her super, but uh, that, it's really easy to use. Next, we have Edgar. I have a feeling people are going to be upset when I say this. Edgar has a short range, so it doesn't take very much skill for you to learn how to aim his super and land in the right spot. His attacks doesn't do anything unless he's like right next to an enemy, and if he's close enough to hit them, he's close enough to successfully auto aim. We've got more to rank, but first, Tribe and I have teamed up with Ford, and I am so excited to talk about the Ford Mustang Mach E because this is my car. Like, I bought this car 10 months ago. It is my car, actually, my car. Now, this is an electric vehicle, which is a big reason I decided to buy it. I just plug it in at night, and it's fully charged by morning. And when I'm going on longer trips, the Ford Pass app actually makes it really easy for me to find chargers. And you can even use the app to remote start your car. Now, I live in a really hot climate, so cooling down the car before I'm actually in the car is just amazing. In fact, you can even use your phone as a key. So like I've stopped bringing keys with me anywhere. Like I just use my phone, which is awesome. The Mustang Mach-E features wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, a wireless charger for your phone, an award-winning audio sound system, seat warmers, and a steering wheel warmer. And I don't know how it does it, but whenever you pass a speed limit sign, it updates the current speed limit on the dash, which is actually like, it's such an amazing feature. I use this all the time. Plus, it has enough cameras to give you an overhead view of the car to make sure that you actually park between the lines. This car is just so amazing, and that's not even half the features I love about it. But by far the best feature is the driving experience. The model I purchased goes 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds, and since it's an electric vehicle, there's no shifting gears, which makes acceleration just feel seamless. The first time I experienced it was just incredible. So check it out using the link below, and and thanks to Ford for sponsoring this video and for making such an awesome vehicle. Up next is Sandy. Sandy's attacks may not fire instantly, but it travels very fast and it's also not very long, which means that auto aiming is pretty, it's pretty much what you're gonna do all the time with Sandy, unless you're trying to hit more than one enemy at a time. And his super is so large, if you miss his super, you, well, I don't wanna offend anybody, but you might wanna play a different game. You might argue that a sleep simulator gadget takes a little bit of skill to use, but that little bit of skill just involves falling back a little bit before you use it. Up next, also in the F tier is Poco. Poco's attacks are slower than Sandy's, but it's basically double the width and reaches even further. His super is even easier to land than his attack is, and his gadgets don't require aiming either. The only tricky thing with Poco is literally just paying attention to your teammate's health. If you do that, then like, Congratulations, you've mastered Poco. Next is Shelly. Shelly usually requires you to aim her attacks in order to charge her super, but even if you don't do that, you're still probably good because Shelly's pretty much useless at a long range. At a close range, both her attack and her super are best used with auto aim. And even with her clay pigeons gadget, you can get away with auto aiming that if you use her shell sock star power. And otherwise, okay, she takes a little bit of skill, but there's a reason why she's the first ball you unlock. Up next is M's at the very top of the F tier. M's does require some decent spacing in order to deal the most damage from her attacks. She's a little bit more complicated than like Shelly or Sandy, right? However, her attack is still very wide, it's very easy to land, you can mostly auto aim with her, and her super is even easier to use since not only do you not need to aim, but it also slows enemies down instantly, which makes it really easy for her to actually hit her next attacks. Next to the D tier brawlers, and most of these are still just mostly auto aim, but they do require a little bit of skill when it comes to learning how to actually get good positioning while you charge their supers. At the bottom of the D tier is Daryl. Daryl's super does require some skill to aim correctly, and especially since he can bounce off of walls with it. Once you use his super to close in on an enemy though, auto aim is all you need to defeat them with his attack. Next we have Ash. His attacks are pretty easy to auto aim with, especially if he is at full rage, and his super is easy to use since his rats just move on their own, but I will say it takes a little bit of skill to keep Ash alive while also keeping his rage bar filled up at the same time. Next is El Primo. El Primo's super becomes pretty tough to aim the further you aim it, but even if you miss it by a little bit, it's still a great way to get close to an enemy. Once the enemy is within El Primo's range, auto aiming works, but you might have to move around a little bit to stay in line with the enemy. Plus there is a little bit of skill involved 
involved with moving to the left and right with his punches, but that's, I mean, it's not gonna do very much for you. Up next is Bull. Bull doesn't deal very much damage unless he is basically right on top of an enemy, which in that case, you're gonna use auto aim, right? His super is actually pretty tough to use though, since you can't stop it without his gadget. And it's actually not that fast compared to a lot of other supers that help you travel. Because it's slower, positioning Bull takes a little bit more skill, which is why he's a little bit higher than El Primo. Up next, we have Frank. Now Frank's attacks are both super wide enough so where you don't actually have to be very good at aiming in order to hit enemies. However, he does stop in order to fire them and there's a little bit of delay before he does so. So it takes a little bit of getting used to to figure out exactly what the correct spacing is in order for you to truly master Frank. Next is BB. BB can deal a lot of damage from further away than most close range brawlers. So you have to be able to keep the right distance away from enemies. Her bubble also has a ton of range to it and it bounces off of walls. So the attack alone has a pretty high skill cap. So BB naturally has a little bit more skill cap than some of these other close range brawlers, but mostly it comes down to good positioning along with a lot of the other D tier brawlers. Up next, we have Nita. Nita's super is completely automatic and she can usually do pretty well with just auto aiming her attacks unless she's trying to hit an enemy at max range or around a corner of a wall or something like that. But playing around her bear and trying to keep it alive while also trying to use it offensively does require a little bit of strategy. It's just not too difficult to master. And at the top of the D tier, we have Amber. Amber can easily auto aim. In fact, you should not be manually aiming with her attack most of the time because any brawler that gets within range of her auto aim can ba they can't hide. Okay, there's there's nothing they can do. They're gonna get melted. Her super can be tough to time though, since it takes a little while for the flames to travel across her oil before it actually lights anything on fire. And there's a little bit of weird things that you can master when it comes to using her super. Up next are the C tier brawlers and these brawlers are still pretty easy to use, but you'll probably have to manually aim a lot more than the previous brawlers we've mentioned. And starting us off is Max. Max's attack is just narrow enough to where you won't hit very many shots unless you aim it yourself, but it's still not very hard to aim because she has so much ammo, right? She can also auto aim up close to enemies and deal tons of damage, and her super is also really easy to use as well. Pretty much use it and make sure you're close to enemies when you do. Up next, we have Janet. For Janet, you're pretty much forced to aim her attack unless you're really close to an enemy, and in that case, then auto aiming is better because of how wide her attack is. Her super can be pretty tough to use offensively though because of how difficult it is to aim her bombs, but it takes like no skill if you're just going to use it to run away. Next is Mr. P. Now Mr. P's attacks do take a decent amount of skill since you have to hit an enemy twice with it in order to get the most damage out of each attack. However, his super pretty much no takes no skill at all other than just put it in a good spot. So once you learn that and how to play around the porters, then you pretty much have mastered him. Next we have Griff. Griff's attacks have some good width and fires multiple projectiles, so it's not very hard to hit an enemy with at least just one coin, right? Then you have his super, which is pretty much such a wide range and it's so far that it's almost impossible to miss an enemy unless they are hiding behind a wall. With that said, if you actually aim your shots, you can oftentimes hit more than one brawler at a time with both his attack and his super, so it does take a little bit more precision than just auto aiming, especially when you're playing against enemies at his max range. Up next, we've got Gale. Gale's attacks are really wide and his projectiles all travel in a straight line, which makes it really heat easy to hit targets. He still benefits from manually aiming if people are very, very far away, but even then it's pretty easy to use. His super is even easier to hit enemies with, and it's really obvious when you need to push enemies away from you. So he's pretty easy overall. I will say though, his blustery blow star power does require a little bit of aim to really utilize. Next, we've got Crow. Now Crow's attack has a fast projectile speed, so he can actually get away with auto aiming from a good distance away. And his super can pay off a ton depending on how close you are to your target, but it does take some serious precision to deal a lot of damage with it. Before you try mastering his super though, you wanna try and just focus on learning when to jump on enemies and when not to. But overall, Crow's a fairly easy brawler to master. Up next, we've got Buzz. Buzz's super takes some precise aim if you're going to latch onto somebody at max range and that does take a little bit of skill. Besides that though, his attack is very simple. You can just auto aim it and he doesn't even need to really charge his super since he can charge it just by standing around enemies, which is actually a great way to teach you good positioning for assassins and tanks like Buzz. Up next, we've got Pam. Pam's attack pattern actually requires her to aim her shots in order to, for her to fully maximize her damage. But even if you don't do this correctly, her attack is wide enough that it's very easy to deal at least some damage with her when you're far away. Her super is also extremely 
extremely easy to use as well. Up next, we have the B tier. These are like average brawlers, right? They're not very tough to use, but they do have some mechanics that might take you a while to figure out how to use them. Starting off the bottom, we've got Penny. Penny's main attack requires some decent aim to hit people at max range, but her super is extremely easy, easy to use. Her salty barrel is usually the better option between the two of her gadgets, and it does take some good time to use it effectively. Up next is Eve. Eve's largest projectile is actually really easy to hit, but the other two do require some good aim, and you really need good aim if you're going to hit all three. Even though her hatchlings do move automatically, there's some strategy behind the placement of her super, because you don't want to place it so far back that they'll actually like lose all their HP by the time they hit the enemy, but you also don't want to place it where it's going to get destroyed before it actually hatches. Next, we got Bonnie. Bonnie's cannon is really slow, but its projectiles are so fast that you can successfully auto-aim a lot of her shots, even close to max range. You obviously do need to aim her super, and her melee form needs to be aimed at max range because of its attack pattern, but a lot of times you can also just auto-aim with that as well. The decision between getting back into her cannon or staying in melee form also is a little bit of a tricky one sometimes, so that's another level to consider. Up next, we've got Tick. Tick's attack takes too long to drop down for auto-aiming to work. However, his attack radius is absolutely massive, so it's not very hard to hit enemies, and he's one of the easiest brawlers to manually aim with. His super does need to be placed at the right spot, though, so that it can reach the enemy for it before it gets destroyed. He does have some really cool mechanics where you can use his gadget in close range situations to push enemies onto his mines. Up next, we've got Squeak. Squeak's attacks have a huge blast radius, but they take a long time to blow up, so you can't actually auto-aim unless you're really close to actually stick to the target. His super actually requires some really good aim because even if you know the direction that his bombs split in, it's still very hard to hit an enemy with it unless you drop the super really close to them. Next, we've got Bo. Now, Bo's mines don't really require good aim, but there's a lot of strategy behind where you can actually place them, which makes it kind of difficult to master. He's also a little tricky to master his movement while his attacks because if you do it in one way, then he'll hit all of his projectiles at an enemy, and if you do it the opposite way, then he'll actually make a spread of arrows, and that can take a little bit of time to master. Either way, it's pretty easy for you to hit at least one of your shots with Bo's attack. Next, we've got Colette. Now, Colette's projectiles are actually very fast, and even though her super is as well, you still need some dis decent aim or you'll accidentally hit a wall. Her gotcha gadget is a very strong gadget as well, but only if you can time it right, which can be really tough depending on which brawler you're facing up against. Up next, we've got Meg. Meg is a very basic brawler until she gets into her mecha. Now, since her mecha's health decays over time, you can't really just wait around for an opportunity to arise, so using her super does require some good timing, because you want to make sure you can fully take advantage of it when you do. Her mecha super also needs to be timed right, since it charges automatically every few seconds. Next, we have Leon. Leon's another brawler whose attack pattern changes slightly depending on his movement. His super is also very easy to use until you start facing experienced players who are good at checking out where he is, but then you need to just be really smart on how and when you use it and where you choose to move. Next, we've got Jesse. Jesse has some good range, but her projectile is fairly slow, making it very difficult for you to manually aim at max distance. And really, you can only auto aim if enemies are really close to you. There's also some strategy behind where you place her turrets so that it doesn't get destroyed instantly, but also so that it can actually put some of the pressure on enemies. And that's a little tricky to figure out sometimes because it fully depends on what type of brawlers are on the enemy team. Next, we got Barley. Now, the further you throw Barley's attack, the longer it takes for it to actually land. So, even though it does have a big radius, you can't always just aim directly at the enemy. Barley's all about forcing the enemy to move in places that they don't want to go, instead of just trying to assassinate brawlers, so there's a lot of thinking involved when playing Barley. It's not that he's difficult to master, but his strategies do take a lot of concentration. But Grom takes even more concentration. <laughs> Grom is similar to Barley, but his attacks travel at a constant speed no matter how far he actually throws them. His attacks are really strong, but the pattern is very easy to dodge in a 1v1 situation, so you actually want to play Grom with your teammates and figure out how you can play around with them, making it more difficult for the enemy team to avoid your shot. Next, we've got Otis. Otis's attack is pretty easy to land, but it's very hard to hit an enemy with all projectiles unless they are very close to him. His super is not only totally wasted if you miss your target, but you also have to use it at the right time or it won't make very much difference in the match. Next is Lou. Lou's attack is also pretty difficult to get all the projectiles to hit, and it's even more narrow than Otis's attack. His super isn't very hard to get good use out of, but there are good spots for a super, and then there are great spots for a super, and a lot of players don't know the difference. Next, we have Fang. Fang's super isn't too hard to use because 
he just travels so fast while he's using it. But his attacks can actually make it very hard for Fang to charge up his super because his aiming reticle doesn't actually show you where his shoe is going. You do get the general direction from his kick, but then it can be pretty hard to accurately aim past that point. Up next, we've got Spike. Spike's attack and his super are honestly pretty easy to use. It covers a large area that's kind of hard to miss. The only reason why Spike isn't lower on this tier list is because mastering Spike also means you have to get good at knowing exactly where his cactus is going to explode and where the projectiles will move after they explode. So it's not just about aiming his main attack, it's also about aiming the six projectiles that come out of it afterwards. Next, we have Terra. Terra's main attack is basic, but it does take a good amount of practice to hit enemies with two cards instead of just one if they are close enough. Now, her super is one of those abilities that is almost always going to be good, but if you can master the positioning and the timing of it, it can be absolutely devastating for the enemy team. And sometimes knowing exactly when to just use one super and try and recharge it, or when to try try and get an entire enemy team wipe does take some skill to master. Next, we've got Lola. Now, Lola's attack has a good range, decent width, and several projectiles, so it's not very hard to use. And honestly, she's another brawler that would probably be lower on this list, but she actually becomes significantly better if you accurately fire her shots with her ego and not just herself. This is particularly difficult to do when her ego is very far away from her because her ego doesn't have an aiming reticle at all. So in order for you to master her, you've got to be good at aiming in two places at once. Up next, we've got the A-tier brawlers, and it takes a lot of time to master these. These brawlers require really good aim, or they have complex mechanics, or they require, like, interesting positioning, or all three of the above. At the bottom of the A-tier is Gene. Gene's attack is extremely easy to hit at a long range, and before his attack splits, you can usually just auto aim most of the time. However, really good Gene players use his attack to hit brawlers around walls after it splits, and you can't afford to waste his super, because really, it takes so long for you to charge up his super in a competitive match. So you have to be really confident in your ability to aim his super the one or two times you'll be able to each match. Next, we have Brock. Brock's attacks have a slow projectile speed, so you can only rely on auto-aim if the enemy is standing really close to him. It's really easy to land one or two rockets with his super just because of how big the radius is, but learning the attack pattern of his super can actually make a big difference in how you can effectively use it and make it very difficult for the enemy to escape without taking hits from three or four rockets. Next, we've got Bell. Bell's attack has a lot of range, but it's very narrow, so you have to have really good aim in order to hit enemies at max range. Her super has a tiny bit more width, but it's not much different than her regular attack, so auto-aim only works at close range where she's honestly really vulnerable. There's also a fair amount of strategy when it comes to using both of her gadgets. Next is Colonel Ruffs. Ruffs' attack already requires some good aim and knowing angles where it can bounce off of walls. His super needs some good more good timing if you're actually trying to hit an enemy with it, but even more important than that is just staying alive after he gets powered up. Or, knowing which teammates to throw his super at instead so you can power them up. Next, we've got B. B's another sharpshooter, just like Belle, but there's a little bit more strategy to her playstyle because of how her main attack works. Her super has a reticle that doesn't exactly match up with the actual projectile, so hitting brawlers around the walls is possible, but it does take a lot of practice. Also, she's unlike a lot of other brawlers because she only has one ammo, so figuring out exactly how to use that, especially when she's fighting against lots of enemy brawlers, can make her a little bit more difficult to master. Next, we've got 8-Bit. 8-Bit's attack is isn't quite as narrow as the other brawlers with long range attacks, but his movement speed is really slow. This not only makes it harder to dodge attacks, but it's harder to land all of his projectiles since he can't keep up with the enemy that he's actually shooting at. He has a lot going for him, but he also has a lot against him, which is why he's difficult to master. Next, we've got Surge. Aside from it being very difficult for him to get his first upgrade, Surge's attacks have to be aimed at max distance because of how narrow they are. Once he does get upgraded, his range does increase, but that just means that your aim needs to increase with it, right? I've also seen players get really good at dodging attacks with his super while dealing damage to an enemy at the same time if they just time it perfectly. And I know you can get some really great plays with Surge, and he's pretty tricky to master. Next, we've got Byron. Byron's also a sharpshooter, but he's very different from the rest since he can heal his teammates with his attack. He can also heal himself and his teammates with his super, so there's a lot of strategy involved in deciding whether you want to attack your teammates or enemies or heal yourself or use your gadget or super the enemies or super yourself or your teammates. So not only do you have to be good at aiming, you also have to be really good at thinking about the overall strategy while playing him. Next, we've got Piper. Piper is one of the toughest sharpshooters in the game because her attack gets weaker the closer you are to her, so she can't auto-aim very well. All of her shots are best used at max range, and that just requires 
really, really good aim consistently throughout the match. Next, we've got Sprout. Sprout isn't necessarily harder to use than other throwers, but its attack reticle doesn't show where his shot will go after it bounces. Its super can also take some pinpoint accuracy when you want to use it to separate yourself from an enemy, especially when they're right on, on top of you, which is why Sprout is very difficult to master. Up next, we've got Gus. Gus is a really complex support brawler, so even though his attack is really simple, spawning ghosts in the right places can be very difficult. Then you have his super, which can easily be used on himself, but it's very risky to use on your teammates because if you miss, you actually waste your super. And there's a lot of benefits to utilizing his super at the exact right moment. Up next is Carl. All of Carl's abilities are pretty basic, but because of how fast his gadget and his super can move him across the battlefield, he's an effective assassin and he's really tough to kill. But not only that, bouncing his pickaxe off of the nearby walls to speed up his attack is really hard to do and get good at, but it pays off so much and that's why mastering him, it really is difficult. Finally, we've got the S tier brawlers. These are insanely difficult to master. There's essentially no skill cap on these brawlers because of how difficult it is to truly master them. Starting us off in the S tier is Nani. Nani has a very difficult attack pattern to master because not only do you choose the direction that it goes, you also have to choose the distance that it goes. So not only is it difficult to land just one projectile, especially when you're trying to get like around a corner or something like that, but landing all three projectiles requires pinpoint precision and that makes her truly difficult to master. On top of that, her super also gets very tough to control and it honestly doesn't take long before it starts moving very quickly. Next, we've got Colt. Now, Colt's attack and his super have a very slow unload speed and they are very narrow, so it's extremely difficult to hit the same target with every projectile or even with just most projectiles. Whether you're able to land your attacks with Colt not only depends on how good your aim is, but it also heavily depends on how good your movement is at the same time and relies on your ability to correctly predict how the enemy player is actually going to move as well. Up next is Rico. Rico's attack and super are essentially the same as Colt, except they can be bounced off of walls. This makes his attack a little bit easier to hit enemies with in certain maps and situations where there's a lot of closed corridors, but being able to accurately bounce his shots off of three or even four walls can be very effective and very difficult to do. Additionally, a tough skill to master with Rico is going ex right next to a wall, and instead of aiming at an enemy, aiming at the wall and bouncing it off to increase your range, which allows Rico to actually hit enemies that are too far for him to hit normally. Next, we have Stu. Stu's projectile speed is actually pretty fast, so he can get away with auto-aiming quite a bit. However, using every ammo to dodge attacks and move to the right places while you're trying to continually charge your super and stay alive live and going in and out of battle as you go is something that you can get infinitely good at. He can even charge his super twice with only one ammo, which is a skill in the S tier of itself. But you have you have to have insane timing and like he is he's tough to master. Next we have Mortis. Mortis is actually very similar to Stu because of how well you have to be able to use his dashes to not only dodge but also to figure out whether you're going to use them offensively. Mortis is even tougher than Stu though because you actually have to dash through enemies to hurt them. So Mortis requires a lot of skill because of how risky his playstyle is and whether you're not actually going to use his attacks for offense or defense. Next, we have Sam. Sam's mechanics are all honestly pretty simple, but getting them all to work together perfectly seems to have no skill cap. When he fires his super, his movement speed and his reload speed increases, but his damage decreases. And then it'll also heal him when he picks it up, but then his stats go back to the way they were before, which can be good and and bad. Being able to consistently make the best out of that constant changing situation with all the stats is extremely difficult to master, especially when you're in the heat of battle and you're trying to actually assassinate a team when they're all firing at you. And we're doing it. We're putting Dynamite in his own tier, the impossible tier. Dynamite by far. I mean, it's like all the S tier brawlers and then Dynamic is on a whole other level when it comes to his skill cap because of his Dyna jump star power. It's hard enough to hit shots with Dynamic's regular attacks and his super, but effectively using his Dyna jump star power to avoid attacks is so hard to do. But not only just once, but you could do you can jump twice or three times or four times. I've seen somehow people doing five or six times right in a row because of how 
like the timing to do that. It's insane. I've seen it. It's crazy. I don't believe my eyes. And honestly, I think they're cheating. Because in my opinion, that's impossible, and that's why Dynamite is the highest skill cap brawler in the game. And there you have it, the skill cap tier list. If you're just getting into Brawl Stars and you're trying to learn the fundamentals, I highly recommend starting off with the brawlers at the bottom of this tier list. And if you've been playing for a while and you're looking for a challenge, pick a brawler towards the top of the list and see how good you can get with them. Let me know your comments in the section below. Obviously, this is all subjective in my own personal opinion. I would very much appreciate you guys using Kokairos in the Brawl Stars shop to support this channel. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe or check out one of these two videos right here. For now, this is Kairos. I'm ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars.